I'm going to show you how to do linear regression in Microsoft Excel today. This is what we're going to be building together. We've got a simple data set with two sets of data points. We're going to chart that into a scatter plot. We're going to find a trend line. We're going to talk about how to use and why to use linear regression. And we're going to talk about all the functions built into Microsoft Excel that will help us do this along the way. Finally, at the end, I'm going to show you how to use some of the more advanced data analysis tools that also come inside of Excel to build a lot of this in one fell swoop. So let's get started. Linear regression is how we show the relationship between two sets of data with a straight line. So in our example here, we've got concert ticket prices here on column C in this table. And then in column B, we've got the distance from the stage in meters. And these are just made up numbers, but this illustrates the point that we see in the chart when the distance from the stage goes up, as you would expect, the concert ticket price goes down. So there's a relationship there, and there is a slope of the line, which is how steep it is, showing how drastically the ticket price goes down based on the number of meters from the stage. So we have a couple different points of interest that we will get into and build out together. The first one that I just mentioned is that slope. So how many units of Y will this trend line go down for every unit of X that it goes over? So how much does the price go down for every meter distance? And in our case, we find that to be $4. So it goes down $4 for every meter of stage. Then we've got the uh, Y intercept. Now, what is this? Well, this is when the distance from the stage is zero in our case. So up here at the top, we could zoom into this point right here, and you can see that it's right around 250. And from our equation, we see that it's exactly $251.13. So that is when the x value is zero, where is the y intercept? The r squared amount is the proportion of the variation in y that's explained by x. So it's how well the price can be explained by the distance from the stage. This is always going to be between zero and one. And as you see here, it's 0.99. So it's almost at one. One means that you can explain all the variation from the y variable and zero would mean that you couldn't. So this, it's a very clear relationship between the two values. The Linest formula down here is one that's going to simply give us both the y-intercept as well as the slope. And then down here, we have a forecast equation where we can just arbitrarily enter in some distance from the stage and it will forecast what that price is going to be. So if I put in 25, it's about 150 bucks. 35, about 109 bucks. So one thing to note here, you might want to be careful how far out of the data set that you enter the distance or the X variable. For instance, if I hit 80, it's going to give me a negative $72 amount. And while it would be nice to be paid to go to a concert, that is not real life scenario there. So it's simply uh, projecting that line to go down below the X axis. Uh, so you want to stay around wherever your data set is and not get too far out there because your results are not going to be accurate. Do you remember this formula from geometry class? We've got Y equals AX plus B. We're predicting Y values in our chart or in our graph based on a coefficient A, which is the slope, how steep that line is going to be, times the X value plus a constant. So B is going to be that Y intercept. And so we need to find the slope and we need to find the Y intercept in order to be able to forecast different Y values from this data set. So the first thing that I've done here is I've created a table out of these values. To do that, you can just highlight your data set here. I've got about 100 values in mine. And you can go to Insert, and then right up at the top, we've got this table. It's grayed out because I've already done it. Control-T is the shortcut to do that if you want to use a keyboard shortcut. Now it's a table, and that'll come in handy when we get down to the formulas in just a second because it just makes it easier to write the formulas. Now the next thing I want to do, I'm going to highlight this table and I'm going to highlight the header columns too. And I want to insert a chart. So we're going to go to insert again. And then right here in the middle, we've got scatter chart. And I'm going to insert the scatter chart just right there. There's a bunch of different types of charts in Excel. Uh, we're not going to get into anything more complicated than scatter chart though. 
And now we can see that here are all our data points, as we would suspect, as the distance from the stage goes up, that's the bottom x-axis, the price on the y-axis goes down. So the seats in the way back cost less as we would expect them to. Now if we want to change colors, we can get this to match up with everything else we're doing. And there we go. We got some green little data points. And we'll format the chart title and the data sets over here. Let's just click everything in the chart. And there we go. Okay, so the first thing that we want is to throw a trend line on here. And so to do that, there's a few different ways. One, you can just right click in the chart and there's an add trend line button. Over here on the uh, edge of the chart, we have chart elements. We can add the trend line from here also. I'm going to click that little checkbox and let's see what we've got. We can select linear, exponential, linear forecast, several different options. So for our purposes, it is linear. And then if we come in here and we right click the trend line, we can format it. Let us display the equation on the chart. So that's going to be handy for our trend line to be displayed right there. Let's right click that again. We can display the R squared value on the chart as well. And then finally, I don't want it to be a dotted line, really. I would like that to be a solid line. So let's go over here and you actually uh, can select dash type to the solid line here. And then I will make it not green, but rather a darker color so you can actually see it. And if you want an arrow, you know, hey, we can put an arrow so you can see it's trending downward and to the right. Okay, so here is our chart basically filled out the way that we want it to so we can visually see in the scatter plot what's going on with the regression formula. And we've got our formula right up here, the trend line. Okay, how do we go about manually finding this? So Excel, because it's got everything built in, has a slope formula built in. And so if you just type equals slope, then it wants known y values as well as known x values. And it's going to, it should give us that negative four value. So our y values, again, are the prices. And then our x values are our distance from the stage. So we select those columns from the chart. And there's what it looks like right there. And you see that we've got our slope of negative 4.04695354. In the same way, we can find our y-intercept by just typing in equals intercept and doing the same thing, our known y's. And this time, I'm going to just select our table, which is this table 37, bracket. Our y values are the price. Our x values are, are the distance. And there we've got that $251.13, which is the y-intercept. And again, that is where the price would be if you were at zero distance from the stage. So that makes sense. The highest price tickets are going to be up close and personal right there at the stage itself. Now, to find out whether or not there is a real correlation, how well we can predict the y value from the x value, we can use the r squared formula. So same thing. We put our known y's in there. And then we put our known x's in the second argument, and we get the r squared value. Now that's 0.99. Again, like we saw at the start of the video, it very well predicts the y value based on this equation. To get both of those things, the slope and the y-intercept in one fell swoop, there's a linest formula. And that takes, you guessed it, the price, the known uh, y values, the distance, which is the known x values, and it gives us both negative 4 for the slope and 251 for the y-intercept, just back to back. It's what's called a spill formula. It spills from this cell where we wrote it over into the one right next to it. So it's got those two values. And then finally, what if we wanted to do that forecasting? So that's the point of why we do these linear regressions anyway, is to figure out how to predict future values or how well we can predict future values. So if I had a distance, like I said earlier, of 54 meters from the stage, what's the price going to be? Well, we could manually plug into our equation up here in the x value right here and go negative 4 times 54 meters plus $251. And that would give us that value, the price of that ticket. But we're in Excel, so we just want to forecast and there's several different forecast formulas. We want the forecast linear formula. And we want to forecast the x value or from this x value. So I'm going to select that cell 
F29 in my case. And I'm going to put in the known Ys again and the known Xs again so that it can have that data to go off of. And it's going to give me the forecasted amount from a seat that is 54 meters away. $32.59. Sounds like a bargain to me. What if we could do all of this in one fell swoop? Well, as I promised, we can. Excel has data analysis built into it for exactly circumstances like this. If we go up to the data tab in our ribbon, and over here on the far right is this analyze section where I've got a data analysis button. You might not see this. If you don't, come over to file first, go down to options, and then come over to add-ons, and then down here at the bottom where it says Manage, make sure you click Excel Add-ons if it doesn't show up already. Select Go, and then make sure this Analysis Tool Pack is selected. Click OK, and then once you do that, you should have a Data Analysis button in your ribbon under the Data section. Click this, and you'll see a huge list of all sorts of analysis tools. We're going to use Regression because that's what we're doing. And then we're going to, inside of here, input those X and Y values again from our table. So I've already done that with our Y values being the price and our X values being the distance from stage. We want labels on this. And I selected the output range to be in our spreadsheet down here. You can put this on a new tab if you're building a legit workbook and need that for presentation purposes. Down here at the bottom, we have residuals and normal probability sections. And this is outside the scope of what we're talking about in this video, but just know that you can do a whole lot with this built-in tool. I'm gonna click OK, and now we can see that we've got a summary output of all of this statistical analysis for the linear regression right here. Here's some stuff we're familiar with, our R-squared value, standard error. We've got this ANOVA table right here, and then we've got intercepts, coefficients, and as you can see, there's our y-intercept right there with the coefficient of negative four for our slope. Standard area, we got p-values right here if we wanna test the confidence level of our data. I hope that's helpful for you in learning how to perform linear regressions in Excel. We've gone over how to take a simple data set, turn it into a scatter plot graph a trend line. We learned how to find the actual values for the equation of that trend line, both inside our uh, graph tool as well as down here with the built-in functions. And then we learned just now about how to do that all in one fell swoop using the data analysis tool in Microsoft Excel. Now, if you want to go deeper into regression, there are multiple linear regressions instead of just a simple one. This is just taking two sets of data, but you can have more than that. And Data Camp does cover these things in more detail if you want to check out some of the advanced courses at Data Camp. Okay, what about the math? I know you want to get into the nitty gritty of how these equations are actually derived, and let's do that right here in Excel. So for simple linear regression, these are the formulas that will work. In multiple regressions, they do not work. They're different formulas because it's different scenarios, but for our purposes, to get the slope, we have R times the standard deviation of Y over the standard deviation of X. And R is the correlation between the Ys and the Xs. To get all of these values, we simply have formulas in Excel. So first up, we've got the standard deviation formula, and we'll just throw in the values of the Y table right here in the price column, that's our Y values. We're using the dot S version of this equation. There is a dot P version as well for population. If you have the entire population data set, we do not. If you're in an older version of Excel, this might also not even have an S on it. It might just be STDEV. That works just the same way for 2007 and previous versions of Excel. But we're going to use the modern syntax of .S. Then we're going to do the same thing for the X values right here for the standard deviation. We're going to throw in the distance uh, values from the distance column. And we're going to get 59 and 14 for those standard deviations. Then for the correlation, R, we have another formula, coral, short for correlation. We're going to throw into that two arrays, the first one being our Y values, the second one being our X values, and it's going to give us this negative 0.99 correlation between the two. Remember over here we had R squared, which is a positive number, because when you square a number, it's positive. And uh, so we needed just the correlation value so that we can get that negative slope from it. 
And now all we do to get the slope is plug in values. So we've got our R value, and then we multiply that times the standard deviation of the Y's divided by the standard deviation of the X's, and we get negative 4.469534, which as you can see is the same thing we got when we simply used our slope equation. The only other thing we need for the intercept is the average of the Y's and the average of the X's. You've probably used the average formula yourself, we're gonna put it right here. We're gonna throw the prices in there from our price column and then the distances from our distance column. We're gonna get those values. And then for our intercept, we can simply plug them in. We take Y, the average of the Ys, minus the product of the slope, which we just calculated, times the average of the Xs. And there we get that $251. Remember that uh, corresponds to our dollar ticket price amount for our Y intercept. And if you scroll up here, that lines up with 251 when our distance from the stage is zero. But wait, what? That doesn't make any sense. What if our logic breaks down and it doesn't make sense? As the case is here, you cannot be zero meters from the stage unless you're performing and then you're not buying a ticket. You're hopefully making money off of the show. So it breaks down. What do we do when this happens? Well, we simply put our thinking caps on and we use common sense and we know that that does not work if you get too far to the zero uh, value here for the Y or too far down at the other end below zero for the X's, it just falls apart. As we showed down here, if we enter 80 as the distance, the price is going to be negative and that doesn't make sense either. So we can just hold to what we found here and that is the slope is negative four, which means for every meter of change closer to or away from the stage, the price is going to increase or decrease by $4. So if you step away from the stage by one meter, the price goes down $4, so forth and so on. That's what this means. That's the important piece of information that we can derive from this simple linear regression example. So don't forget to give it that final litmus test at the end of just common sense. Are these values making sense when it comes close to one of the axes? Thanks for watching and have a great one.